All right, so I've got a little exercise for you. If I can find my pen, where I put it? Right, a little exercise for you. I want you to predict what's going on here. So I've got uh, numbers. So I've got five, six, seven, six, seven, five, six, seven, four, uh, sorry, eight, seven, eight, seven, six, seven, All right? Look at this string, string of numbers here. I want you to tell me whether the next number or the next number is going to be. All right? Just take a little bit of time and just guess what the next number is going to be. Now, for those of you who are frantically trying to analyze this and are saying, hang on, is there a pattern there? I'm just going to tell you now, this is, there is no pattern to this. I've just come up with this randomly in my head. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that this number could quite easily be an eight. It could quite easily be a six. It could probably be another seven. I don't think we had a, another sequence of two numbers in the row. But if you if you imagine this analogy was with um, a price tape or closing price, if you're a swing trader, you've got a final print of five, six, seven, a six, a seven, a five, a little gap down there, six, a seven, an eight, a seven, an eight, a six, seven, six. You know, the chart is basically looking like this, right? Five to six to seven to six to seven down to five to six to seven to eight to seven to eight to seven to six to seven. You know, that's pretty much what we've got there. So what's the likelihood that we could go there or there? It's random. It's completely random. I know you got to give me a little bit of a leeway for this analogy. But the point I'm trying to make here is that trying to predict the next print or the next closing price or the next direction, it could be up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, you know, under those conditions is really, really random. Now, what we'll do is we'll switch this and we'll say, listen, let's have a look at this scenario. In fact, let me look at the scenario I had in the presentation. I'll see if it's the same one I've got in my head um, right now. Okay. So you've got this scenario, right? We've we've had this uh, one, two, three, five, nine, 15, 20, 30, 31, 32, 28, 25, 19, 15, 12. What's the next one? Okay, what's the next one in that scenario? Now, look at the difference. Okay, this is just literally off the stuff off the top of my head. This is randomly coming to my mind. But what I'm trying to show to you here is that if you can imagine this was a chart, right? We've gone from one to two to three to five to nine to 15, 20. We have gone parabolic, right? The high was what was it? 32. Okay. So we've gone parabolic. Now we've started to come down very, very aggressively. You know, what's the chances of, uh, of that next print being higher? Probably quite low because a lot of people have bought here. Okay. I know I'm simplifying this in, in the extreme world, but if you could kind of grasp what I'm trying to get across here is that, you know, many people are going to have bought this. Many people are going to be stuck long from this point. They are stuck long and all of a sudden now this thing has just halved in the next however many days, however many minutes, whatever time frequency that is. It is much easier to predict the fact that that is probably going to be less than 12, that next print, because of the nature that people are trapped, because the trend is now down from the highs, because whatever caused that catalyst was a nothing event, all these kind of things, rather than getting involved in that one, two, two, one, five, seven, random movement. So you can see this distinct, distinct difference in that, guys. And that is why, you know, for me, it was always important to be able to recognize that I had a good idea who is going to buy after me. And it's all very well and chart patterns and all this kind of stuff are great for making trading decisions. You know, there's nothing against using that, but also it's very important to be able to say, okay, that's the chart pattern I'm taking. Let me look at the bigger hit picture here. What reason do people have to buy after I've gone long? Because that is ultimately how the only way you're going to make money. You can have the best analysis in the world, but if someone else doesn't come up after you and the majority of people are more aggressive buyers than sellers after you, you will not make money. So 
understanding fundamentally that that is what you're looking for and then taking one step further from that and saying, okay, well, if I know that I need to find a position where the crowd is going to buy after me, what reason have they got? What, how is that going to work? Okay, if it's a breakout, why are they going to do that? Are they trapped from before? Have we got news flow coming in that's going to basically make shorts cover? Or we have a wider trend where people are shifting from uh, you know, indices to bonds or whatever it may be. But having that reason as opposed to getting involved just in a choppy middle of a range, nothing going on and trying to predict based on just a nothing candlestick. Because don't forget, just before we move on to the next the next part of the series, is that you're still going to get an indicator reading for that. If you were to plot that and extrapolate the other one on the chart, you know, the five, six, seven, back to seven, you'll still get an indicator that says buy or sell but that's when your skill comes in a trade. That's when you can differentiate yourself from the the crowd by saying, yes, but look at the conditions. The conditions are saying nothing's happening. This is, this is an almost random occurrence. I'm not trying to be predict random here. I'm trying to wait until I can predict the behavior of the money flow and then step in front of it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but it's going to give you a far better chance. Hang on, guys, for the next one. Move to the next one now.